All right, as promised, my first recorded video of this week will be about opioid. And this is from uh, Market Watch. As powerful new opioid nears FDA approval, critics ask if U.S. is stoking its drug crisis. The product consists of an opioid that is 500 times stronger than morphine, but drug maker defends its need. A new potent opioid medication intended for quick pain relief has become the center of a maelstrom of controversy as the drug nears a U.S. Food and Drug Administration approval decision. The drug Desuvia consists of a single dose tablet of sufentanil, a synthetic opioid that is many times more potent than fentanyl and 500 times stronger than morphine. The tablet comes in a preloaded plastic applicator that is used to deposit the medication under a patient's tongue. Interesting. Fentanyl is 50 times stronger than morphine. So this Dusuvia or, or uh, Sufentanil is 10 times stronger than fentanyl. The FDA's Anesthetic and Analgesic Drug Product Products Advisory Committee recently recommended Dusuvia for U.S. approval with a 10 to 3 vote and a final decision expected by November 3rd. The FDA often follows such recommendations, but is not obligated to do so. But critics, most notably Dr. Rayford Brown, the chair of the committee, have spoken out against the product, worrying about putting another strong opioid on the U.S. market as the country continues to wrestle with a devastating opioid crisis. Uh-huh. Profits over people. That's capitalism, folks. In addition, the design makes it more divertible, he told Market Watch, meaning that an individual who doesn't have a prescription might be able to obtain the product. Other voices speaking out against the drug include the consumer advocacy group Public Citizen, which co-signed a letter with Dr. Brown to FDA leaders and Senator, Senator Edward Markey, Democratic Massachusetts, who recently called on the FDA to reject the medication. This drug offers no advance in my mind over previously available opioid formulations, but provides great risk of harm to patients and the general public health. Brown, who is a professor of anesthesiology and pediatrics at the University of Kentucky, told Market Watch on Friday that Kentucky has a bad opioid pro, uh, problem. And Dr. Brown, I've, I've heard of him before. He is an advocate against uh, opioid uh, prevention. Moreover, I don't believe at this point in the U.S. that there is any good reason to put another potent opioid on the streets, he said. I agree. DeSilvia's manufacturer, Redwood City, California-based drug manufacturer, Acel RX Pharmaceuticals Incorporated, says that these concerns are unfounded. The product is made up of one 30 microgram tablet, a dose-suggested amount of sufentanil that is no stronger than any other opioid already available in the U.S., said Dr. Pamela Palmer, co-founder and chief medical officer of ACEL RX. The design, meanwhile, it makes it easier for medics to use on the battlefield and could help elderly or obese patients for whom an intravenous opioid can be difficult and oral opioids may take some time to start working, she said. When I tell you this dose is not enough to get many drug addicts excited about it's enough drug to treat elderly women who had a hip replacement, Palmer said. Palmer told Market Watch that Acel RX product would only be distributed in medically supervised setting, like a hospital or ambulatory surgery center, which had to be certified through the company's risk evaluation and mitigation strategies program. The Suvia wouldn't be available at a pharmacy, say, for example, Walgreens, Palmer said. She also pointed to the FDA Advisory Committee's recommendation in support of the product. Brown was not at the vote as a major anesthesiology conference was happening at the same time, something he says he told the FDA about, though the regulator did not move the meeting. But Brown said that while FDA has worked hard to try and find a way to prevent diversion of prescription op opioids, it has proven a difficult task. REM's programs are intended to avoid these types of harms but haven't been successful, he said. His advisory committee recently reviewed a REMS program for 
transmucosal fentanyl that was only supposed to be for patients with cancer pain, he said. But it became clear that there was no controlling that drug once it came to market. In reality, once the drug is marketed, the FDA has no control over it. Then it becomes the Drug Enforcement Administration's problem. And the DEA has enough problems with trying to keep black tar heroin out of the country, Brown said. ASIL RX shares dropped 13.7% in extremely heavy Friday trading. Company shares have surged 21% over the last three months compared with 1% decline in, S in the S&P 500 and 1.7 rise in the Dow Jones Industrial Average. All right. Um, it probably will be approved because um, this company has so much riding on this drug that they're going to lobby to get this approved. But this is another formulation similar. To, it's not quite as potent as carfentanil. I don't believe I think carfentanil may be um, twice as um, potent as this. But they found a formulation that was probably safer to take. Because it doesn't take much. It doesn't take much of the, the, these uh, synthetic opioids to actually give you a dose. So for them, if they can get this stuff passed, it'll be... Um, it will be a windfall because there's so little of this stuff that needs to be the active ingredient needs to go into these particular buffered pills. But that's how come they have to have a um, an applicator to go under the tongue because this stuff will dissolve in your hands and it'll dissolve in your hands and get you high and they don't want you handling these pills. So they have to have these special applicators to keep it safe. But uh, trust and believe. You know, there's probably already a lab in China that has a hold of this stuff and is already um, breaking it down and and figuring out how to reverse engineer this. And they know they know this stuff. You know, they know that there's not enough market uh, for these pills on the regular market. They know this they're going to this stuff is going to find its way out into the public. It's going to be a high commodity, but they really don't care because they need to make money. And this is a easy way to make money. It's legal drug dealing. In my opinion, it's just going to get more people hooked and more people on this stuff. And they, and since this stuff is cheap to manufacture and cheap to distribute, they're going to make, you know, whatever uh, amount of drug they make, they're going to make what, a hundred times, a thousand times their, their uh, investment. Yep. Profits over people. There's nothing you can do about that. And like I said, it's only going to get worse because it takes, it takes so little. I guess you can't, like they just said, you can't keep uh, black tar heroin off the streets coming from Mexico. And this stuff is nowhere near as potent as uh, the fentanyls and the, and the car fentanyls. And this stuff comes out this, uh, this uh, 10 times stronger than fentanyl. That means it's going to take 10 times less to actually come in and do damage. So it's going to be easier to slip through across the borders or in mail or whatever. And there's no, you know, and it's so cheap to manufacture. There's no way they're going to keep all this stuff out. It is what it is. Um, the opioid crisis is just going to have to burn itself out. So all the addicts were going to have to, have to either have to come clean or they're going to die off. And that's the only way it's going to stop. And it seems like they're trying to make new addicts. So, you know, what I, when I first looked at this and I saw how cheap the stuff could be manufactured and how little it took to get you high. And how easy it was to transport, you know, either manufacture in a foreign lab or transport across the border. Psst. Man, man, there's, there's, there's nothing you can do with this stuff. There's nothing you can do with this stuff. The, everybody knows it. Everybody knows it. It's too cheap. It's too easy to transport. It's too easy to, to transport around. Hell, you can put five pounds of this stuff in a in a in a car or in a uh, briefcase and get on a bus man and, and go to anywhere in the midwest man drop drop the stuff off man and that's like you know that's like 50 million dollars worth of product there's nothing you can do about that the, uh, the hardest thing is watering it down and this evidently they found a a process that can be delivered where it can be watered down enough to where it won't kill you but that shows you exactly how much a capitalist country cares about its people it's always profits over people profits are the bottom line and the only reason that 
they look after you is because they're protecting their profits. Is what it is. But anyway, with that, I'm going to close this one out. Put this one up. This is BGS out and I'll see you guys on the next one.